Hi, everybody. Welcome to Prophecy Today video. I'm Jimmy DeYoung. It's great to have you along. World leaders are focused on the city of Jerusalem where I am broadcasting from right now. These leaders are upset because Israel wants to build much-needed homes for the Jewish people. And indeed, they want to do it in Jerusalem. World leaders want Israel to stop any building in the city of Jerusalem. Bob McGinnis, who is our man in Washington, D.C., believes that Prime Minister Netanyahu may have been trying to get President Obama's attention to focus it more on Iran. You know, there was a meeting uh, a year ago plus a month in which Netanyahu came to Obama's um, uh, presence and said, look, we want you to take care of Iran, and Obama said, if you wait uh, until the end of this calendar year, uh, we'll you know, do our best to do something about it. Well, that came and went, and today we are uh, toward the end of March, still no solution on Iran. I do believe, Jimmy, this whole uh, problem with regard to 1,600 new homes that was announced by Foreign Minister uh, Lieberman uh, that really upset uh, Vice President Biden and, and President Obama, you know, was planned by Netanyahu uh, to get their attention to say, look, you know, we're not going to wait forever. They had to use something that would get our attention. The Palestinian issue clearly does, as we saw from General Petraeus' uh, testimony this week. He said, look, you know, the world of the Arabs is very upset that there's no movement in a positive direction regarding Israel and Palestine. Bob McGinnis in Washington, D.C. Dave Dolan is our man who gives us the Middle East news update. David believes that Israel will keep building in Jerusalem. Look, until there is a final resolution of this conflict, until we come to an agreement, um, you know, life goes on, and we can't uh, deny our families uh, space to live and this sort of thing. Uh, as part of a final settlement, maybe Israel will give up uh, quite a few of those settlements, as they did uh, in the Gaza Strip, a very painful process, of course, uh, taking down 21 communities there, uh, taking down four communities in northern Samaria as part of that unilateral move uh, on Israel's part. Uh, everybody expects there will be some of that in a final peace settlement, but the Israelis have made plain that they will keep some of the other communities, especially the ones right around Jerusalem, Israel's holiest site on earth. Uh, Judaism's holiest site, uh, the Temple Mount that you just mentioned. So um, uh, to pressure Israel in that way was to produce, uh, was was bound to produce a hardened stance on the Palestinian side, and of course that's what it did. And now to be condemning Israel for building uh, 1,600 new apartment units in an existing community. Uh, this uh, community already exists uh, near to where you're sitting right now, between uh, Jerusalem and Male Adumim. Um, to make that into a major issue when a low-level official in the Interior Ministry made this announcement with no coordination uh, with the Prime Minister's office, uh, the Interior Ministry being controlled by one of the uh, coalition parties, the Shas party, not even the Prime Minister's own party. He didn't know this was coming. It wasn't meant to be an insult to the Vice President. And to turn it into an international incident uh, and to speak the way they have is just ridiculous. It is definitely harming the chances for peace uh, much more than a few more apartment uh, units will. David Dolan, our Middle East News Update man. Itamar Marcus heads up an organization called Palestinian Media Watch. The Palestinians are saying something about this as well. And Itamar believes that President Obama has been the cause for the conflict over Jerusalem here in Israel. From the moment that President Obama uh, responded as strongly as he did against Jews building in Jerusalem, there has been continued violence. Uh, everything Jews plan to do in Jerusalem. Now, this building has obviously been going on for years. They didn't say anything. Um, and coincidentally, it turned out to be the same time as Obama's statement. So I, uh, unfortunately, I think that, unfortunately, without really in, uh, planning this, President Obama has been uh, the spark for all of this violence that we've had in the last few days uh, and weeks, really, in Jerusalem. Very interesting statement. President Obama of the United States possibly the source of uh, the violence here in Jerusalem. Rabbi Yoel Karen is a leader among those who are preparing to build the temple. Rabbi Karen believes that the Muslims know something about Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. 
The Muslims are so fanatical right now about the Temple Mount because they know something that a lot of us don't, and that is this land has a heart, and the heart of the land of Israel is the Temple Mount, and they know that whoever controls the heart of the land essentially has the high ground on all of it, and that's why they're holding on so strong. And it is time for the Israeli government to assert their control over the heart of the land. Rabbi Yoel Karen, what an interesting thought. Control over the heart of the land. The heart of the land is the Temple Mount in the city of Jerusalem. Well, as I said earlier, the world seems to be focused on Jerusalem. The Israeli announcement of 1,600 new housing units in Jerusalem has got them all upset. Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, in Israel this week, he said stop building in Jerusalem and the Jewish settlements. In fact, Ban Ki-moon says that the Jewish people have no right to control the city of Jerusalem. My friend, that's not what the Bible says. There's much said in the Bible about the city of Jerusalem. In fact, that word, Jerusalem, is used 764 times in the Bible. And for the end times, as it relates to the city of Jerusalem, we can look to the book of Zechariah. Over 52 times in the little book of Zechariah, Jerusalem is mentioned. But the focus is in Zechariah chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, where it says Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling in verse Verse 2, and a burdensome stone too heavy to lift up in verse 3. That's talking about those who become intoxicated with power as they control the city of Jerusalem, and that would be the Palestinian people, the Muslim people now controlling the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Those people will have a heavy weight to deal with ultimately because Jerusalem will continue to be the center of controversy. The prophet Zechariah in chapter 1 verse 14 says Jesus is jealous. He's aggressively possessive of the city of Jerusalem. In verse 15 he says he's sore displeased with those who are arrogantly secure as they control the Temple Mount and try to take charge of the city of Jerusalem as well. Verse 16 says that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will return to Jerusalem one day and build his temple there. That's Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 12. Verse 13 says he will rule and reign from that temple that he will build right here in Jerusalem. And of course, Psalm 132 verses 13 and 14 says that God has chosen Jerusalem and the Temple Mount to dwell among his people forever. Those are all prophecies that, my dear friend, will be fulfilled. No matter what world leaders say about Jerusalem, God has a plan for this sacred city. And indeed, his plan, his prophecies, will be fulfilled. But before any of these prophecies about Jerusalem are fulfilled, there's going to be an event that takes place, the next event on God's calendar of activities. That's when Jesus shouts, the archangel shouts, the trumpet God sounds, and we're caught out of here to be with him. That's called the rapture of the church. If you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you'll go at that rapture. If you don't know him, you need to admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ came, he lived, he died, he was buried, he resurrected. And because he died, he took away our sins. Because he resurrected, he guaranteed he was the one qualified to do that. And then you simply call upon him. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do that, and you'll be able to go with us in the rapture. By the way, that rapture can happen at any moment. And having said that, there's basically nothing left for me to say, except let's keep looking up until...